Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm feeling a little ornery, Nathan. How are you today? I'm feeling ornery too, so let's be cantankerous in this episode. Snitches get stitches, bitches. <laughs> well, that's a that's a weird way to start off the podcast. <laughs> so you know what? Before we jump into this week, um, you were just telling me before we went on, you were telling me about uh, some podcast interviews that you've been doing re- recently on other people's shows. And are you able to let anybody know if there's other podcasts that you're on where where they can go and check that out? Ooh, very interesting question. You're a mind reader because we actually didn't talk about this piece of it. Um, I am working on, I, we, the team, is working on behind the scenes almost like a, um, a media page, a media hub, where all of the other things are at. Um, some of the podcasts that I've been asked to be on are pretty awesome sauce with some really cool new people. I posted on Facebook the other day um, something along the lines of, I meet the coolest people. And it's because of that. I've been being connected through the people in our world to some people that do podcasts that are pretty friggin' awesome. Um, I don't have any specific links right now that I can drop on the show, but we are putting together a, a media page where all of the things so people can kind of see who I'm connecting to and, and who, I'm, who I'm starting to feel up, if you will. Nice. All right. You, you were mentioning a couple of them. I was like, oh, I want to listen to that episode. Where can I find it at? So as soon as that's available, we definitely need to let the listeners know about that. And today's episode... I hit you up because I just recently read um, a book by about the Sandler selling system called, there you go, you can't train a kid to ride a bike in a seminar. And I loved about 90% of the book, but there was a couple of points of um, contention. There was a couple of, of points where he said stuff in that book that I was like, well, this kind of goes against everything that I'm all about and seemingly against the stuff that some of the people in the know are about. And so there was one main thing that I really wanted to talk to you about today, and that was educating your prospects. And in the book, he says, don't educate your prospects. And I'm a big fan of educating your prospects. So I feel like maybe I've been doing it wrong all this time. It's a misunderstanding. And what I mean by that is um, the Sandler selling system is all specifically derived and designed for people who sell to a market. And that market, by and large, is at the sophistication level of four, meaning they know they've got a problem. They know that there's solutions that are available. They know that you're an option as one of those solutions, et cetera, et cetera they know what they need to know about your stuff. You and I and a lot of the people that listen to this podcast and other podcasts in this space, we're direct response marketers. We sell services that we provide. Some of us sell courses, like some of us do consulting, right? A lot of us are dealing with, and this is actually a problem, a lot of us are dealing with prospects who are not actually prospects and they're not even actually leads because they're not actually pre-qualified to even be an actual lead. And so it's, it's a mistake. It's a, it's a misunderstanding on the person who's reading that information. In this case, you and everybody else who doesn't understand this one distinction. There's a difference between a lead and a prospect. And there's two different sides to that. In our world, selling stuff to people that we don't know, who we are not sure if they want or need our thing, a lead is somebody who might possibly at some point in the near future, next 10 years, consider doing what we do, right? That's a lead. In the sales world, if you understand who your target market is, A lead is somebody who you know, by and large, is going to need and want the thing. They already understand all there is to know about it. They just don't know the specifics about your version or your company about it. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. So I think one of the, one of the areas that I was maybe trying to work out in my mind was specifically in that book, he's talking about a sales call or a sales mm-hmm. conversation. Yep. So I was, the, the conclusion that I drew was during the actual sales call or during the actual sales conversation, that is definitely not the place to be trying to educate, which is a huge mistake I feel like that I make because a lot of times I jump on a call and I want to tell them, oh, I do this and I do this and I do this. And those calls always tend to blow up in my face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here's, here's, the, here's the bottom line of all of it. Either your lead slash prospect knows that you do a thing that can get the result that they're after. However, what they understand about that result, getting that result, how it works, what you do, how you do your thing, you don't understand that information until you do one thing. Qualify them, which means that you ask them questions. And what that means is before I just come out with it and tell you all about the crazy shit that I do and how it works and how amazing it is and and all that shit, I ask you questions to understand specifically what you want to know and what you think you know before I go about telling you what my thing does. The the backside of this is, is you never answer an unasked question in a sales call ever right? There's other ways that it's put. Don't paint seagulls in your prospect's picture. There's a lot of ways to put this. You don't speak to something that the prospect is not interested in because as soon as you start raising questions they haven't thought of, now they're confused and they can't make a decision. So what we're talking about actually in this episode is two things. Educating your marketplace through marketing activities, and we need to cover that. And then the other piece is when you're on a sales call with a prospect, you don't tell them about how it works. You ask them questions about what they want, what they need, what it needs to look like, right? It's all questions. There's no telling. And this is the common thing in the sales world. If you're telling, you're not selling. Because if you're telling, you're not asking questions. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's get back to that other point. There's marketing, which is what we do, which is mainly what we need to do is educate our market a little bit in a couple of key areas, but we don't tell them all about how the tool works. We do most of the what and most of the why and very, very little of the how. That's marketing. Okay. So I think also one of the things that came to my mind when I was when I was reading the book was the fact that when it was written the consumer versus seller power dynamic was a lot different than it is today. If a if somebody wants to buy something today, they have a huge advantage as far as being able to collect information compared to when that book was written. Can you tell me a little bit about how that influences the, the, the mentality of, of when and when not to educate prospects or, or leads? Mm-hmm. You got like three questions in there, but let's, let's start here. Um, the, the main idea with educating your marketplace is to continue to bring along the people that are at less and less sophistication level, right? So in your marketplace, you've got people that don't even know they've got a problem, right? So if you presented a a solution, they'd be like, I ain't got the problem. Until they realize they've got the problem, they don't even know that there is a problem to solve, right? And so the marketing that we do is designed to help them understand, feel, grapple with, recognize, experience the problem that we know that they've got and then to help them down that path to realize that there's solutions to that and then eventually that we might be one of their options. Now, that's educating a marketplace. That's not what this book's talking about in sales. Um, you don't take somebody who knows they have a problem, they know that there's viable options out there, they recognize that you're one of them and start telling them about how your thing works. 
you don't do that, whether you're marketing or selling. You just, that's, that's not how the human brain needs to engage to make a decision. It's still all question-based. But by the time somebody's ready for that sales conversation, now we're in selling. We're not in marketing. Okay. And so the dynamic shifts. Now to your point, when this book was written and when most actual solid sales information was created, the power dynamic, as you call it, between consumer and somebody with something to sell was drastically different for two main reasons. One, we weren't so connected that we were bombarded. Like back in the 80s and 90s, drive down the highway and you're bombarded with messages. You get on the radio or TV, you're bombarded with messages. That's a thousand fold because of the internet, which means that we as consumers are so heightened. Our bullshit meter is so sensitive that now those principles are even way more important. The principles being, don't tell, right? Educate the right parts of your marketplace. But when you're in a sales conversation, you're not telling them anything. You're asking them questions. And that power dynamic has shifted to where we as consumers, as far as the buying of things, our intelligence level is through the roof compared to people 10, 20, 30 years ago, by and large, which makes selling shit, quote unquote, that much harder for almost everybody. For those of us that know how to have a sales conversation and just go through that flow and ask questions, it makes it really fucking easy. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I've come across in my own business is that one of the things that I like to do whenever I write a sales letter is I want to know what is the person reading this trying to get out of it? Are they trying to get a piece of information, some insider knowledge? Are they trying to figure out how to solve a problem? And what their main goal for reading it, I want to make sure that I'm going to deliver that. So while a lot of the actual sales conversation in print is about selling, there is room for information there. There is room for um, informing if you know what they want to be informed about. So when it comes to a sales conversation, when it comes to selling versus marketing, one-on-one in person doing what you do, when is it appropriate to inform and educate your market and when is it not appropriate? When you're marketing, it's appropriate to connect with them at their level of awareness about the problem, the solution, you being an option of the solution. It is still, you're still educating them on the what and not so much on the how. It's education so they can make an educated decision, okay? But what you're talking about, and we've, we've, we've stated it this way a lot, copy is sales and print. It's a one-way conversation. That's kind of true. It is still actually marketing with a solid enough flow, a solid enough path to lead somebody from... Ah, this is the problem that I've got. Yeah, I agree with that. Ah, this is a solution that logically and reasonably makes sense. I want the result emotionally. Ah, okay, cool. I'm bought in. Oh, this guy and his personality and the way he talks, totally me. Oh my God, this is, I can get my solution now. That's still marketing. You copywriting fuckers can call it sales all day long, but it ain't. It's marketing and it's marketing that's done so well that the person doesn't feel like they've been sold to. They feel like you took them by their hand and you gently walked them down their own path and you provided all the right information, education, that they needed to then make the right decision for themselves. They bought, they weren't sold. Okay. Now in a sales conversation, let's say somebody has gone through that process and to buy your thing, They have to actually get onto a sales conversation because you need to qualify them and make sure that they are actually the right fit. Now we're in sales, but not until the very end when the offer is made. It is still all marketing and qualifying up to that. Here's the fucking thing. You're totally the right fit. Do you want it or not? Okay. And this is, this is the thing that a lot of people that listen to us, not just us, but us in general, people who know how to market and sell, 
don't understand. It's all marketing and just a little itty bitty bitty tiny bit of sales. Now, that's a little bit different if you're working in corporate or you're a six or seven figure paid consultant and you're working in the technical sales space, science, medicine, manufacturing. Okay. That's a, that's a different thing. What almost all of us do, business owners, service-based business owners, consultants, coaches, right? Authors, speakers, people with knowledge. We're doing 97% marketing and 3% sales. Marketing is expressing the what and the why and just a little bit of the how. And then the sales part is, yeah, here's how it works, right? I asked you all the questions I needed to ask. You got to ask me all the questions that you needed to ask. Now I know that, oh, you want A and C and G and Y and you want it in red. Cool. I can get you A, C, G, Y, and I can get it in red for the price that we talked about. Do you want it? Right. I didn't, I didn't tell you about B. I didn't tell you about E. I didn't tell you about Q. I didn't tell you about elemental P. I didn't talk about orange or purple or black, I, right? I talked to you about specifically what you wanted to talk about. The only way that I can find that out is by asking you questions. That's qualifying. That's not me telling you about how amazing all this shit is. So real quick, we've only got a couple minutes before we're out of here. But um, I did want to ask, what are some of the drawbacks to informing? If, if you do the, hey, let me tell you about X and, and G and, and L and all these other things that you didn't ask about, what are some of the drawbacks that you might experience if you don't take this advice? Well, let's first briefly examine why people with something to sell do that. Nathan, do you like talking about yourself? I love talking about myself. Do you think I like talking about myself? I bet you do. Do you think all of our prospects and clients really love talking about themselves? I know they do. Okay, cool. So if I've got something to sell and I'm talking to somebody who wants to buy my thing and I'm talking about me or my thing, I'm not letting them talk about themselves. That's the first piece. Ah, this guy doesn't get it. This is not where I'm going to buy my stuff from. That's a subconscious thing. That's not conscious. 99.9 99.9 times out of 10, okay, out of 100, okay? The idea there, though, is when you start talking about things that that prospect either doesn't want to know about, doesn't know about, or doesn't care about, now you're off target and it's not about them, they're going to get educated by you and they're going to go buy that thing somewhere else from somebody that lets them talk about themselves. That's the drawback. There's not a million of them. That's the thing. It's not specific to me. I'm not buying here. Okay. Man, that makes so much sense. And it sheds light on so many times that I've screwed up sales calls myself. Yeah. Well, either you learn it or you don't, right? I've been through it too. I've done it too. The bottom line is it's not about me and how cool my stuff is. It's about you and what it is that you're trying to accomplish and if we're a fit. That's it. That's all there is to it. Awesome. Landon, a very you you did a lot of informing and educating. On I know. Episode. I appreciate it though. Uh, where can people, if they want to check out more episodes of the podcast, where can people go to check it out? If you want to get some education, check out salesgorillapodcast.com. Bitches. All right, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you next week. Fantastic. Have a great day. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Hey, don't forget. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of us that just don't get along.